Good morning. Today's topic is enterovious vermicularis. These are the worms that can be found in the large intestine of human beings. These enterovious vermicularis, they are previously known as oxyuris vermicularis because the adult female worm of these enterovious vermicularis, its posterior end is very much thin like that of the shape of the pin. That's why before these intervious vermicularis, they are called as oxyuris vermicularis. Thus, the common name pinworm was given to these intervious vermicularis. In the large intestine of human beings, mainly cecum and vermiform appendix, the adult worm resides there with the help of anterior portion in the mucosa of those cecum and vermiform appendix. These adult worms are observed as a very thin piece of thread. That's why these intervious vermicularis are commonly known as thread worm also. So it has got three common names. One is worm, seat worm, and thread worm. This is the picture of the adult male worm of enterocleus vermicularis. This is the anterior region, while this is the posterior region, which is where there is presence of tail, and that tail is coiled ventrally. At the anterior portion of these worms, it may be either male or female worms, there is presence of a cervical allay, which is the typical characteristic feature of these worms, that is enterovious vermicularis. Cervical alley is in the anterior portion of male and female worms of enterovious vermicularis. They belong to kingdom animal, phylum nematodes. They have got a round body. They belong to class Cicernenta, order Rhabditidae, family is Oxyuridae, and it belongs to genus Enterobius and species Vomicularis. These worms, that is Enterobius Vomicularis, which are commonly known as pin, seed, or thread worm, they are cosmopolitan in distributions. They can be found worldwide, but these worms are most commonly found in temperate regions where the climatic condition is cold. Most of the worm infestations, it is very much common in tropical regions. But enterobiasis or infection by this enterobius vermicularis, it is very much, although it is cosmopolitan in distributions, infestation by this enterobius vermicularis can be seen, is mostly seen in temperate regions. And it affects mostly children. The habitat of these worms in human beings is the large intestine, mainly the cecum part and vomiform appendix of human beings. The adult male and female worms of intervious vomicularis, they reside in the cecum and vomiform appendix of human beings until the egg developed. The adult worms attach to the mucosa there is mucosal reasons of uh, cecum and vermiform appendix with the help of anterior portions. If we discuss about the uh, morphology of the adult male and female worms of intervious vermicularis, most of the in most of the worms, male worms are comparatively smaller size than the adult female worms. Here, the thing is similar. Male worms is smaller than the female worms. Then, after mating with the male worm, male worm, it lays eggs. The egg, which is produced by the adult female worm, is also different than other worms in case of these intervious vermicularis. The shape of the egg of intervious vermicularis, it can be defined as plano convex. The egg is plano convex in nature. Now we'll discuss about the morphology of the adult worm of intervious vermicularis. Male is comparatively smaller than the adult female worms. The adult male or female worms, it appears as a very fine thread of fine thread 
which is white in color. It is spindle or fusiform shape in nature, and it's one of the end is pointed. Mouth is situated at the anterior regions, and mouth which is situated at the anterior region of the adult male and female worm. It is surrounded by three wing-like structures. These three wing-like structures, which is present at the anterior portion or anterior region of the adult male and female worm, is called as cervical alley. This cervical alley is one of the typical features of interrobius vomi pularis. It can be found in other species of worms. It has got esophagus, which is double bulb structures, which is the extensions of the esophagus into a bulb-like structures. Now, we'll discuss about the adult male worm of interrobius vomi pularis, which is comparatively smaller than its female counterpart. The male worm, it measures two to four millimeters in and 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 millimeters in breadth. Its posterior end is ventrally and it is sharply truncated. At the posterior end of these male worms, there is presence of copulatory spicules, which helps during mating with the adult female worms. After mating with the adult female worm, this male worm of intervious vermicularis. It dies immediately after fertilizing the female worms. So this is also different from uh, the other worms that you had studied, like Strongula stracoralis, uh, Trichuris trichura, Ascaris lumbricoids, and hook worm. Here, in case of intervious vermicularis, the adult male worm dies immediately after mating with the female worms. The adult male worm of intervious vermicularis, it can survive for about seven to eight weeks inside human body. Now, female worm is larger than the male worms. It is approximately twice larger in size than the adult male worms, which measures eight to 12 millimeters in length and 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 millimeters in girth. The posterior end of the female worm adult female worm, it is pointed. Vulva is present in the female worms and vulva is front of the middle part of the body, which opens into vagina. There is presence of a pair of uterus, obidogs and ovaries in the adult female worms and uterus is distended. It is completely filled by numerous number of eggs, approximately thousand number of Thousands of eggs are present in the distended uterus of the adult female worm of Interubius pecularis. So this is the morphological differentiation and certain other characters of adult male and female worms of Interubius vermicularis. The gravid female worm, after laying egg, this female worms also dies or female worm gain accesses to the human body and it dies inside its natural habitat that is large intestine. Male worm dies after fertilizing the female while female adult worm dies after laying eggs. What is the common name of trichuris? Yeah. Yes, why hoop? Why it is called whip worm? So its structure resembles a whip. Raksha, structure cost on, sir. So its structure resembles a whip. So anterior portion is a uh, thin. Uh, like mm -hmm. the thread and posterior portion is slightly blunt and blunt and thick, and so thick. it resembles like a whip. Posterior is uh, thick, thicker than the anterior portion, which is similar to the handle or stalk of the whip. That's why it is called whip worm. And the coiled ventral portion, the anterior portion is ventrally coiled, which is which can be seen only in the male worms. Isn't it? And the thing is same in, in male worm of interrobius vermicularis. The posterior portion of this adult male worm is coiled ventrally, while the common name of interrobius is pin, P I N S E A T seat or T S R E A D thread worm. The adult female worms, it can survive for about 12 weeks.
So this is the morphological characteristics of adult male and female worms of interubious wormy cularis. Take picture of adult male. Sorry, this is adult male and adult female worm. Here you can see this is anterior portion and this is ventrally ventral posterior portions which is coiled ventrally. So this is the adult male worm of interubious wormy cularis. Here you can see at the anterior region presence of esophagus and this esophagus is extended to form a ball-like structures. So esophagus is double ball structure, which is the characteristic feature of uh, male, uh, characteristic features of adult worms of interubious wormy cularis. Here at the left side, this is the largest structures. It is thicker than this male worm. This is the female adult worm of interubious wormy cularis. This is the anterior portions where there is presence of oral lesions. This is the esophagus, which ends into the double bulb-like structure. This is the first, and this one is the second bulb. And this is the posterior regions, which is uh, sharply pointed. As a result, the adult worm of interviews vomicularis got the name pin worm. This is the structure of uh, male and female worms of interviews vomicularis. Now we'll discuss about the egg or ova of interviews vomicularis. The egg of interviews vomicularis, it is colorless in nature. That means we can say ova of interviews vomicularis is non bile stained. When we observe under the microscope, the egg will be colorless. It has got asymmetrical. Egg of interviews vomicularis, it is asymmetrical in nature because one of the side of the egg is plain while other side is convex in nature. That's why we can define the shape of the egg of interviews vomicularis as plano convex ova. This plano convex ova of interviews vomicularis, it measures about 50 to 60 micrometers in length and 20 to 30 micrometers in ova of this interviews vomicularis. It is surrounded by a transparent cell or transparent cell membrane, which is layered in nature. Inside this transparent, double layered transparent cell, there's a presence of larva. And this larva is, can be present inside double layered cell, which are coiled up and forms a structure. Generally, of interviews vomicularis, which is plano convex in shape, it floats in the saturated solution of sodium chloride solutions. During the lifetime of gravid female worms, the adult female worm or gravid worm produces thousand number of eggs. That is, which varies from five thousand to seventeen thousand number of eggs. This is the picture of ova of interviews vomicularis. Here you can see one of the side is plain while other side is convex. Generally, the ventral side of the egg will be plain while the dorsal side of the egg will be convex in nature, which is asymmetrical. And in this plano convex shape egg, you can see this is the coiled fur of larva. This is the stain picture of the plano convex shaped egg or ova of interovious vomi cularis. Debolina, Debolina, yes, what is the morphological difference between adult and female worms of interovious vomi cularis? Yes, Debolina? Said um, 8 to 12 length in adult female. What is the general features of adult male and female worms? Said in male, um, in male the length is short. Two to four millimeter, and in female uh, vintage long eight to twelve millimeter. By appearance, how can we distinguish between adult male and female worms? First thing is size, isn't it? Sir, in in female uh, in female posterior portion ventral group patient. In case of female worms, the posterior region is pointed like the shape of P I N pin, while in the male worm. The posterior region is that is the main difference. 
Okay, now we'll discuss about the life cycle of interiorvenous vermicularis. Detailed life cycle of interiorvenous vermicularis was described by a scientist whose name is Lucard, and he described in the year 1864. Infection by this interiorvenous is known as intero. Uh, this infection by this interiorvenous vermicularis is called or known as interiorvenous, and interiorvenous is one of the ancient disease. A person get infected when a healthy person consumes food stops or drinks which is contaminated by the eggs of intervious vermicularis. The eggs must be embryonated in nature's food to start or begins infection by this intervious vermicularis. When this food stuff is or drinks which is possibly contaminated by Embryonated egg of intervious vermicularis is ingested by healthy person. Egg goes to our gastrointestinal tract. In the small intestine, there is presence of digestive juices. Due to presence of digestive juices, the double walled the cell membrane of the egg is dissolved. As a result, the tadpole cell shaped larva, which is present in the ova or egg, of this intervious vermicularis, it comes out or it emerges out from the egg. Then this larva matures into adult and female worms in the small intestine. Then these adult male and female worms migrates to the cecum and vermiform appendix of large intestine, where this male and worm mates and Male worm generally dies after mating with the female worms. Then this gravid female worm, after mating, after fertilizes by this adult male worm, it migrates to the rectum part and anus of the infected person. This adult or gravid female worm of this intervious vermicularis it is nocturnal in habitat. During night time, this adult female worm of intervious vermicularis it comes out from perianal regions and in the perianal and perineal regions this adult female worm deposits egg during deposition of egg since this egg is coated by albumin layers it is sticky in nature and eggs which is laid by the adult female worm it attaches to the perianal and perineal regions of the infected person when female worm lays eggs in perianal or perineal regions, these eggs produces allergic reaction in perianal and perineal regions. As a result, infected person scratches in those perianal or perineal regions. When such infected persons handles any food or drinks, those food softs or drinks are created by the eggs of the intervious vermicularis and when person consumes such contaminated foodstuffs, healthy person will be infected by this intervious vermicularis and its life cycle continues. The egg which are hatched in the perianal or perineal regions of the infected persons, in presence of oxygen, those eggs are hatched out and it produces larva. This larva is migratory in nature and it may gain access to human body through perianal regions and it resides in the uh, cecum and vermiform appendix. Then it develops into adult male and female ones. As a result, this intervious vermicularis is responsible to cause retrograde infections. These intervious vermicularis are also responsible to cause auto infections. How it causes auto-infection? Adult form of uh, intervious vermicularis is responsible to cause auto-infection as eggs are laid in these perianal or perineal regions. A person, infected person, scratches in perianal or perineal regions and while scratching under the surfaces of nail, these eggs may present and when a person uh, handles any food stops or when a person uh, keep fingers in their mouth, then egg will be transferred to the 
mouth or oral regions of the infected to the healthy persons or infected persons. As a result, uh, it is responsible to cause auto infection. So auto infection and retrograde infections can be seen in life cycle of intervious vermicularis. Auto infections can also be seen in one of the other worms. Can you give name of um, worm in which we can? Strongyloid coralis. In strongyloid coralis also we can see infection. So you have to study about two worms that causes auto infection. One is strongyloid coralis. And another example is interovious vermicularis. This interovious vermicularis is responsible to cause auto infection, and it is also responsible. It is also responsible to cause retrograde infections. Agar lake in the perianal regions has into larva, and this larva migrates to its natural habitat, that is, uh, large. Animal. Then they develop into adult male and female worms, which is which results to cause auto infections. Sometimes the adult female worms, it comes out during night time to lay eggs. And sometimes this adult worm can gain accesses to vulva, vagina, and up to fallopian tubes also to cause pingitis. Generally, female are mostly affected by these intervious vermicularis than male populations. Now, the clinical features of enterobiosis. When a person is infected by this intervious vermicularis, we can see pruritus perianiate perinei. That is, itching in the perianal or perianal regions can be seen in case of infection by this intervious vermicularis. The adult female worm can migrate to the fallopian tubes also. As a result, it is responsible to cause salpingitis. Adult female worm of these interface vermicularis, it is nocturnal in nature. So during when a person sleeps, so after sleeping of these infected persons, the adult female, it comes out from anal regions and lays eggs, which causes irritation in the perianal or perineal regions of the infected persons and is responsible to cause nocturnal enuresis or nocturnal bed wetting in the children's. The presence of adult worms in large intestine, mainly the vermiform, it is responsible to cause appendicitis, which is very rare. Now, for the diagnosis of enterobiasis, in the infected person, in the stool of infected persons, generally, it is very difficult to find the egg of intervious vermicularis. Why? Why it is difficult to find the presence of pleno convex ova in the stool of infected person? Kamala, Dikari? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Intervious vermicularis le infect ko manseko stool ma, esko egg or ova pound garo unsa. Why? Why it is difficult to see the presence of ova of intervious vermicularis in the stool of infected person? Because uh, the eggs are not discharged by worm. Eggs are what? Worm is an egg discharge. What is it? Fish is not what is it? Intestine is not what is it? Yes. And the reason is that Egg discharge garsa. Itre intestine ma chen garoi na. Egg discharge garsa tar intestine ma hoyna ki intestine ba garsa. Hai? Yes. Since the female worm discharge or lay egg in the perianal or perineal regions during night time, we cannot see the presence of egg in the stool of the infected persons. But sometimes we can see the presence of eggs. In the stool of the infected persons, which is very rare. The adult worm of this intervious vermicularis can be seen or discovered by the infected person or the parents of children. When the adult worms in the perianal or perineal regions, it lay eggs, and as soon as 
the eggs are laid by the gravid female worms, the worm dies. While sometimes the adult worms, after oviposition of eggs in the perianal or perineal regions, again it regains access through anus to its natural habitat that is large intestine. When the female worms dies immediately after laying eggs, they remain in the perianal or perineal regions and it produces itchy or inflammation in the deposition site of the egg where the patient scratches after feeling itchiness. So while itching, while the children or the infected persons itches in those uh, affected, we can see the presence of adult female worms. But adult male worms cannot be seen in perianal or perineal regions because male worms dies immediately after fertilizing the adult female worms. Patient or infected persons should be instructed to bring specimen which is preserved in alcohol or 10% formaldehyde. Stool specimen of the infected persons can be to collect in a universal container which is leak proof, sterile and grease proof and if there is any delay in sending the specimen to the lab, that specimen must be preserved in alcohol or 10% formalin. During the purging of stool by infected persons, in those stool specimens, we can see the presence of adult worms. During the itching time period, we can see the presence of gravid female worms in the perianal or perineal regions. So di diagnosis of interviasis can be done by detection of adult worms, perianal and perineal regions. Eggs, generally in the stool, we cannot detect eggs of these interviarious vermicularis, but sometimes we can see the presence of eggs in the stool of the infected person. Next is detection of ova or eggs of the strongula stracoralis. Interviarious vermicularis, egg cost generally, Ova of this intravenous vermicularis cannot be seen in the stool of the infected persons. Occasionally, ova of this intravenous vermicularis can be seen in the stool of the infected person. Since the ova of this intravenous vermicularis, they are very less, they can be found very less in number in the stool of the infected persons. Various concentration techniques can be used to see the presence of plano convex ova of intravenous vermicularis. Egg of this intravenous vermicularis, which is laid by gravid female worm in the perianal or perineal regions during the night time, these eggs can be seen by using cellophane method. These cellophane tape are attached to the perianal and perineal regions. And then that adhesive tape, that is cellophane tape, is transferred to the glass slide and observed under the microscope to see convex shape ova of intervious vermicularis. Sample from the peri perineal regions, it can be collected by using NIH swab, which means National Institute of Health swab. Sample can also be collected from fingernails. The fingernails of the infected persons beneath the fingernails, there's presence of dirt. And from that dirt, we can see we can find the presence of plano convex ova of intervious vermicularis. Undergarments of the infected persons. From the undergarments of the infected persons, we can also see the presence of plano convex shape ova of intervious vermicularis. So, first thing is we have to collect the specimens. We can collect either stool specimens or swab from the perianal or perineal regions. Generally, ova can be seen in the skin scrapings by using NIS swab or by using cell In the stool specimen of the infected persons, ova can be seen very occasionally. Now, this is the picture of NIS swab. NIS means National Institute of Health swab. This NIS swab consists of a glass rod. This is a glass rod. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. This is the one of the end of glass rod, we attach a cellophane tape by facing the adhesive uh, surface upwards, outward. Then the cellophane tape is tied 
to one of the end of this glass rod with the help of rubber band. This glass rod is attached with the rubber stropper and this uh, preparation is kept inside a sterile test tube. This preparation is known as NIS, National Institute of Health Swap. If this NIS swap is not present, we can simply use cello tape to collect the specimen from perianal or perineal regions. This is the uh, infected children. And with the help of this NIS swab, sample is collected from the skin falls of perianal regions. Then after collecting the scrappings from the perianal regions of the infected persons, this uh, cellophane tape or cello tape is transferred to the glass slide and then it is observed under 10x and 40x magnification of the microscope to see the presence of plano convex shape ova, which is colorless in nature. Now, for treatment, we can give any anti helminthic drugs. The drug of choice is alvendazole, which is given in all those. Then, mebendazole along with pyrantel pamoid can also be given to the infected person. For prophylaxis, the first thing is to maintain clinic conditions. One should wash their hands properly. And if you can see, there is a presence, if uh, in your home or families, if uh, those, if there is a small children's are they in your, if those children are scratching in, the, in their perianal or perineal regions, then you have to be very much careful and you can suspect by yourself that your brothers, your little brothers, brothers or sisters, he or she may get affected by these intervious vermicularis. In such conditions, you can check the perianal or perineal reasons of your little brothers or sisters. And if you also experience such itchiness in perianal or perineal reasons, you can uh, check by yourself. You can get, you can take a cellophane tape or cello tape and attach it to the perianal or perineal reasons and then transfer it to the glass slide or uh, go to the laboratories nearby laboratory and give them the specimen and observe under the microscope to see the presence of you no know, convex ova or sometimes you can also see the presence of adult female worms which is a very fine delicate worms very small in size and it is a white thread like structures so for preventions first thing is we have to prevent the reinfections of these worms and preventions of the infection by contact, person to person contact is very much common in case of interbiasis and proper hand washing practices is very much important along with washing the food and vegetables properly while preparing foods. So uh, summary about intervious vermicularis. Infection by this intervious as interbiasis its mode of infections is by fecal oral contaminations. Sometimes the night clothes or undergarments of the infected persons, it also acts as a mode of transmissions. Born infections is also possible. The female lays eggs in the perianal or perineal regions. During discharging, while female worm discharges the egg, some of the egg are released in the air in the form of aerosols. When such aerosols, which is contaminated by the ova of intervious vermicularis, is inhaled by the healthy persons, infect the healthy individual. It is responsible to cause auto-infections because most of the, it is, interviasis is very much common in children. And children, they have habit of chewing or sucking feet. And under the finger, under the surface of fingernails, there is presence of 
ova of interovis vomicularis during scratching of perianal or perianal regions, which is responsible to cause auto infection. Then it is also responsible to cause retrograde infections. The worm again acts. Again, it regains inside the re-enters inside the body of infected persons through anal regions after laying eggs. That's all about the intervious vomicularis. This is the adult worm of intervious vomicularis. It is is it male or female worms? Sikha, Sikha Goswami. Ye male worm hai ya fir female worm hai Sikha? Female. Female worms. Pata chala. Kaise pata chala ki ye female worm hai? ओवा One side is plain and another is convex, so it is called as plano convex. Inside this plano convex ova, there is presence of that whole shaped larva. So, Raksha, you first go ova. Thank you, Mr. Kuria. Oh, and you, you Vala. Did you have any other? Scary slumbery coins. Yes, yes. यो कस यो कसको ओभा हो यो सेगमेंटेड ओभा छ अनि सेगमेंटेड ओभा र एकको सेल भित्र हुकवर्म हुकवर्म ओभा अफ हुकवर्म एन्ड दिस इज लार्वा दिस इज द लार्वा अफ स्ट्रोंग गिलोइस स्ट्रोकोरालिस रैपिडली फॉर्म लार्वा ओके दिस मच फॉर टुडे थैंक यू हैव अ नाइस डे थैंक यू सर